in this community. And for you all, I think that means it's going to ask you if you're okay with this. Nice. Okay, so here we go. Welcome all to Math 350. My name is Edward. Uh, call me Edward. My last name is not super easy to say or spell. So instead of trying to make you guys type it out all the time, I'm just going to provide you links to my website where we're going to host most uh, information for the class. The only thing I'm not going to put up on my website are grades and all other course content is going to show up on my website. Um, today we're going to launch into the syllabus and surely I'm going to get distracted on a few side topics and you're all going to ask some questions and we're going to get distracted on some other topics like that. But first, I figured it might be beneficial if I tried to introduce myself and you tried to figure out who I am. You could ask questions. You can say things about yourselves if you want. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Here we go. My name's Edward. Uh, I am in the math department. I study statistics, which is like a subset of math in my mind, uh, but also involves a ton of programming. So hopefully we have some programmers in here. Do we have any computer science majors? Yep. You guys, I am. John and Alexander. Alexander, good. How about other majors? What do we, oh, and Iceland? Aislinn? Aislinn. Aislinn, solid. How about other majors? What else do we have in here? Uh, I'm in economics. Kieran, okay, it's good. I started out in econ as an undergrad at Chico State myself. Rock on. I'm a computer engineering. Oh, so you do a little programming nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, here we go. Now y'all are starting to take off in the chats. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, so let's see if I can find the top. Lou, civil, Jared, civil, lots of civil engineering. Brendan, uh, Mason, civil, Caitlin, civil. Oh, there we go. There's an electrical. Uh, Medardo, thank you for having not civil. Matthew, civil. Hannah, civil here too, indeed. Max, civil. Ian, thank you. We got a math me. <laughs> um, Jacob Civil, John Civil, Dalton Civil, all engineers here. Uh, Jonathan, CS, indeed. I feel like I recognize the name, Jonathan. I'll get a face for that later. Nathan, Alex, what type of math? Pure math. Pure. Well done. That sh this should go great for you this semester. Lots of pure stuff happening here. Uh, Josh, engineering, EC, engineering. That's probably like another Edward EC, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll go with it. Mubarak, electrical, fantastic. Liana, electrical, electrical. Hey, Josh, how are you doing? Uh, civil, <laughs> good, good. Math Ed, Juan, nice. This will be great. Okay, so like I was telling Kieran, I started out in economics myself as a Chico State student. Uh, went off, got a master's in econ, then decided stats was what I really needed. So then I did statistics ever since. It's been fantastic. Um, let's see, what else do you guys want to know about me or tell me about you? Who's willing to jump in and speak up? Hey, Edward. My name is Josiah, but I'm... Uh... I missed the first couple of minutes. Are we just kind of doing introductions? Yeah, I wasn't really trying to put any of you guys on the spot, but if you want to introduce yourself, you're more than welcome to. If you want to ask me something about me, nice. now's okay. a good time. Uh, what kind of extracurriculars are you interested in? Like kind of pastimes? Mom, my biggest pastime is programming, no doubt. I spend <laughs> more. <laughs> What's your major, Josiah? Electrical engineering and programming is the, the downside for me. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry to tell you, we're going to do a little bit of it in this class, too. Well, I'm glad I need the practice. <laughs> there you go. At least you're upbeat about it. Uh, I spend most of my time programming, or at least I try to. Uh, and then these days, the things that take up my attention are my six-month-old daughter and my yard. Wow. Yeah, I know. Fascinating life, isn't it? So between that and school, like, you're... You've got no extra time. I got zero extra time. <laughs> That's good though. Yep. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Josiah, and I've 
been in school for too long. Uh, mm -hmm. Junior college, college for like three years and then transferred to Chico after a gap year. So uh, I should finish in a, about a year and a half, maybe two. And uh, I'm electrical engineer major, but I also really enjoy dancing. I've been dancing for about eight, nine years. Uh, yeah, some ballroom, welcome. ballroom and uh, social dancing and ballet. And so uh, I'm actually uh, getting back into ballet because Chico isn't offering dancing. So I'm going sure. back to Reading three days a week to dance since we're online anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Right, nice. Well, good. I'm glad you're getting some more of that in there, Josiah. Thank you. And Jacob, a transfer from where? Uh, Serico. So I live in a small town, and that's the community college there. Oh, okay. What was the small town? Uh, Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest. Yeah, I don't know that one. Where's that at? Um, it's like seven and a half hours south of Chico. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Great, thanks. Okay, what else we got? Do we want to dive into the boring syllabus for part of the day? Or do we want to keep trying to chat? Nobody wants the I'm syllabus. I'm sorry, I was like, um, Dr. Rivaldez, um, sorry I got in late. I kind of was confused about the whole Zoom thing. That's okay, you figured it out now? We'll assume that's yes. Is that Ollie or Ali? Ali. Ali. Welcome, Ali. I'm glad you figured out Zoom now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it takes a little bit, right? That's why I'm trying to kill time to make sure everybody can like, uh, you know, get caught up and make sure we're all here. Honestly, it sounds I think like it's nice to to start a class like this in the online setting because I don't feel like it's going to be much opportunity considering we are in our bedrooms or kitchens or wherever we are in the world right well, now. Well, Josiah, so. to be honest, I'm kind of surprised you're in your bedroom. It looks like you're in outer space there for a little bit. Oh, man, <laughs> my, my background stopped. <laughs> your background stopped. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, Calvin, you're asking, what kind of music am I into? I'll be honest, man. If you took a class with me and didn't realize it's reggae. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I think that means I now know who Jonathan is. <laughs> Uh, it is still reggae, so let's get the shout out for reggae fans right now. Here's what you need. KZFR.org. Listen in on Fridays at 3 p.m. to Sanjay. Now, Sanjay is a retired math professor from the Department of Math in at Chico State. Sanjay is a world-renowned reggae DJ. It is surprising to most who have gone to Chico State to hear the words world-renowned reggae DJ, but in fact, world-renowned. I'm not like making this up. There are the most popular uh, living, the ones that are living, <laughs> reggae artists to date. Tune in to his set weekly on KZFR. You can check it out live 3 p.m. on Fridays. It is, how do you put it? I mean, you'll hear Bob Marley like once an hour. That's how you put it. I mean, no disrespect to Bob Marley. He is a great in the world of reggae, but he just doesn't make up the whole scene. He is not like the end all of the music. There are hundreds of other artists. And when you need to learn about them, you go talk to Sanjay. He is the man. Calvin, it is reggae through and through. All right, what else we got? That was a good one. I liked that one. Any dance hall into that mix? You know, when back in my, uh, back when we could be social and there were these things called music festivals, I certainly hit up the dance halls, but it doesn't really enter my day-to-day -day music. Ali, what about you? Um, pretty much everything really. Um, everything from like hip hop to like Arab folk music, which like music that I grew up with. Um, yeah, yeah. Even like heavy metal phase that I went through. <laughs> I think we all have one of those. <laughs> I think they're fleeting. But... Is KZFR, is that 90.1? 90.1, the Zephyr. Yeah. Thought so. Yeah, totally. It's just not everybody's in Chico, so I thought the uh, streaming broadcast would be better. 
All right. Well, if you guys need um, need some recommendations on artists to check out, we'll have to start with one of my favorite, Ajman Levi. If you don't know him as a reggae artist, you got to go check him out. It's sometimes difficult to find some recordings from him, but you can find some pretty good stuff on YouTube nonetheless. And how about this? Uh, if you all remind me as the weeks go by, I'll give you a new artist weekly. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it looks like he's on iTunes as well. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start sharing my screen. I'm going to share just Chrome here. I'm going to pull up Blackboard. Let's see if I can get you guys out of the screen recording. Yeah, here we go. All right, so we got Blackboard right here. Some people nodding along. Some people saying yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, here we go. I do not like Blackboard. There are no, uh, I am not shy about stating how dissatisfied I am with Blackboard. So I host all my course materials on my website, except for grades. Once we start posting grades, you'll find them on Blackboard, but otherwise my website's where it's at. So follow the link to my website and most information right now is under the meta section. Not all of this has to make sense, but it should make sense by, uh, a lot of it should make sense by the end of the, what do we call this? Do we still call this a period? Do we still, end of this class, end of this hour, whatever we want. So here we go, uh, content delivery. I'm just stating it again. All course materials will be up on my website. Grades will be posted to Blackboard. Some content will be delivered synchronously and some content will be delivered asynchronously. How many people want me to redefine uh, synchronous and asynchronous on the spot? We're all okay with synchronous and asynchronous? Mubarak, I like your picture. It's like you're always answering yes to me. <laughs> Anytime I need a positive confirmation, I'm just gonna look at Mubarak's picture. Thumbs up. <laughs> yes, I like it. Okay, nobody's asking for a definition of asynchronous and synchronous, so I'm just going to move on. I'm going to post my videos, the ones you're to watch asynchronously, to my YouTube channel. There are other videos on my YouTube channel that do not pertain to this class. So the way I'm going to pick out the specific videos for this class are by linking them uh, on my website. So the specific videos you need for this class will be linked from my website. And to be honest, what I'm going to do is link playlists each week. So I'll link you a playlist. You'll go watch all the videos uh, in that playlist for that week. Here's how the class sessions are going to be broken down. Uh, Monday's classes are going to be held online, as we're doing right here, live, in-person, synchronous, at 10 to 10.50, and again from 3 to 3.50. So y'all are in the section for 3 to 3.50. But listen, these days, life happens. It is awkward, it is weird, and it doesn't always go the way we want. So if you need to sometimes tune in at 10 a.m. instead of 3 p.m., please do. Join us on Zoom Mondays at either 10 or 3. I don't really care which you go to, as long as you get in one of them. Um, hey, attendance Edward. Yeah. Does that mean like regularly we could just go to the morning and then all of a sudden we go regularly to the afternoon and vice versa? Like if everyone totally. in the three, three o'clock went to the 10, then you wouldn't need to hold class at three. Is that but correct? I still would because I'm like legally obligated to do oh, so see, as see, a professor of that section. You know, and as many times as people are like, oh, that's cool. We're all going to show up at the three o'clock one so I can sleep in at 10. It's just not going to happen that way. I've been doing it long enough. <laughs> but right you're welcome to just uh, show up at 10 or three, switch it up. You don't even have to tell me which way it goes. All right, cool. Wednesday lectures will be provided online asynchronously via YouTube. I'll make playlists and then post the links to the playlists on my website. So you can watch those whenever you want. So part of the definition of asynchronous is whenever you want to click into YouTube and watch those videos, that's what you get to do. So if you're all like waking up just by chance at 3 a.m. and you're like, oh, I need something to put me back to sleep. Let's go watch some videos for Math 350. That'll get me to sleep in no time. All right, so that's what Wednesday's lecture content is gonna be Fridays are going to be like office hours. 
So same thing, I'm gonna hold office hours on Fridays at the regular scheduled class times, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And you can show up to either, you don't have to tell me which one you wanna to go to. So really, no matter what section you're enrolled in, you're welcome to the other sections class times. Are we doing okay? Is this too fast? Is this too slow? This seems perfect for me. Thanks, Josiah. Other nods, other people, it's three o'clock. We don't care, just talk. All good. Thanks, Karen. All right, then I'm gonna continue on. Uh, office hours, I basically just explained those, but to be honest, I like to think of office hours as like a place for you to productively do your work. Literally come into the office hours and do your homework then. Ask me questions as you're going through it. I can be a coach, I can be a cheerleader, I can try to do whatever it is to help get you through the homework assignments. Plus, eavesdropping on other students' questions is highly encouraged. That's just a good learning strategy, so we might as well do it. Some people think this is like cheating, but I don't understand. If we were in a classroom and somebody asked a question, y'all would hear the question. You would hear the answer to it. That's exactly what we should be doing in this forum, just the same. So by all means, please attend office hours. Even if you don't have anything to ask, just show up and listen to other people's questions and or just sit there and do your work. Uh, course communication. Okay, so I had planned originally that there would be like three ways to communicate with me. Piazza, which is like an online forum. Uh, you could email me or I set up an anonymous Google form that I name ask. And you can literally just ask me random questions about the class and I don't have to know who you are. But then at like 1030 this morning, the first section of Math 350 was like, well, do you care if we set up a Discord? I don't even know what Discord is, I'll be honest. A Discord channel, that's what I think they're called. And I was like, nah, I don't care what you do. So then they invited me to the Discord channel. So I linked it. So here you can sign up for Piazza, which is like an online forum that uh, you can post questions to. You can be anonymous to other students or to me. And you can ask a bunch of questions and I'll answer and it records uh, very organized all of our answers and responses to each other's questions. Or Discord, which from what I can see appears to be more like a chat and it doesn't seem to record uh, in an organized fashion specific questions so much. So I'm gonna try to follow along the best I can with both of these, Piazza and Discord throughout the semester. Um, if you prefer direct identifiable communication, then email me. If you prefer indirect anonymous communication, like I don't know who you are, but you still wanna ask me a question, go to this Google form. Let's just look at it really quick. So at Discord, it has a really robust search function. So you can oh, have does? like people prefix their questions with what problem it is, like say 5.1, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Nice. Alex, maybe you could jump into it and give us like a, a demo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll give you some time. We won't make you do that immediately. We'll give you, we'll let you, we'll ask you to do that later. Uh, okay. Where'd my syllabus go? All right. Here it is. So where are we at? Course description. Uh, so I was telling my girlfriend the other day about the course description. I was showing her like the course outline. And she goes, that means nothing to me. Like, those aren't words. I don't know what to do with that. And then I, it suddenly realized me after years of teaching stats, like, that's what it's like to you all. You don't know what these words are. That's why you have to go to this class so you can learn what these words are. So I realized for this course description, it's a little bit closer to like, by the end of the semester, you should be able to tell me what this course description means. That's what this course description is. So I'm not even going to go through it right now because it's going to be meaningless. There's just going to be words. Student learning objectives. Uh, so it turns out basic concepts of probability are all calculus based. That's terrifying for a lot of people to come into, but I think we're going to be able to make it through okay. But I'm going to try to show us that there's like formal rigorous mathematics behind probability. It'll be pretty cool as we go. We're gonna use that as like a stepping stone to get into mathematical statistics. Unfortunately, mathematical statistics is like all integrals. And in most versions of this class across the US, you basically just practice integrals. 
but that is really boring. And I don't think it conceptually helps us understand the topics of statistics. So I am, much to Josiah's displeasure, going to make us learn to program in the language R. And we're going to approximate integrals using a computer. And that doesn't have to mean much to you right now, but that's what the brunt of this class is going to be. It's going to learn how to make a computer approximate integrals for us. And we're going to do it in the programming language R. Now, some students from the other class were like, boo, R, we want Python. And I said, look, I'm going to make all my lectures in R. But if you want to show up to office hours and have me help you through the same content in Python, I happily will. So if you want to attend office hours with those students and go through this class in Python, please do. But all my videos and all my course content is going to be initially delivered in R. And even if you don't know how to program, don't freak out. We're going to learn it all together. It'll be great. So we're going to do this class uh, understanding the integrals, but approximating them in the programming language R. And then we're going to spend some time doing some relatively simple probability problems. It turns out probability is super difficult to do. It's not as obvious as people want it to be, but it does pay to learn the basic structure of probability problems. So these are going to be the three core elements of this class, learning the formal definitions of probability and how to do some basic probability problems. We're going to see how probability ties into integrals, and then we're going to learn how to approximate those integrals using a computer, because doing the integrals by hand a is boring, B only exists in the classroom setting, and C, all of statistics is an approximation anyway. So we might as well just do it how it's actually used in the real world. Okay, uh, oh, one last thing. The programming language R is completely free. You should not pay for anything related to R uh, for this class. Good, that's my segue into the textbook. Uh, most material is gonna come from my YouTube videos, but, I am going to reference two textbooks throughout the semester. Both of them are absolutely free. The first one is a PDF named Probability and Statistics. So if you follow this link, there is a single PDF download, or you can get each chapter by itself. Now, to be fair, we're only going to do like the first maybe half of the book if we're lucky. So you won't need the whole PDF if you want, but it seems easiest just to get the whole thing and call it a day. The second book we're going to reference is also free. Now, it's hosted on this website, but last time I checked earlier in the day, the website wasn't actually fully up to date. So I might just give us a different reference for this textbook. You see this picture here? Well, it's supposed to be a picture but there is no picture there. And that's frustrating to me. So I might just give us a different resource for that book. Either way, all course materials associated with the class are free. Which leads us to, you are gonna need a computer, access to a computer in order to get through this class consistently and well. Uh, if that presents a problem for you, you should let me know in an email as soon as you can. We're going to need a full operating system for this class. We're going to learn to code in R using the graphical user interface RStudio. So I'm going to pause for like 10 seconds, make sure we're all doing okay, make sure we don't have any questions. And then I'm going to drag us through following all the links we need to to download and install R. Okay, Does how we it do matter what operating system we use? Uh, no, probably not, unless you consider uh, your Chromebook an operating system. No, so you're just talking about like Linux, Windows, Mac sort of well, yeah. deal? Yeah, yeah, all those are great. Any okay. version of Linux should work except for Chromebooks. What else we got? Great question, thank you. Y'all are doing okay? You just want me to keep cruising? Okay, so I'm on a Mac. So I'm going to first go through all the links on a Mac. 
And then I'm gonna ask for a brave and true volunteer to share their screen on a Windows machine and show everybody how to download and install everything on a Windows machine. And I'll help guide you through it if you need to. Okay, so here we go, Mac users first. First click R, then click download R. And then pick a mirror. So mirrors are like hosts around the world that host all the files to the appropriate uh, uh, installer to the appropriate files that will be installed on your machine. I'm gonna guess most of us are in California, so you should go pick the mirror close to California. But check it out, if you're in Spain, there's two mirrors in Spain, pick the one closest to you. If you're in Turkey, pick a mirror close to you. Try to save some people some bandwidth and use a mirror close to you. I'm gonna pick the one near Oregon. And then download R for a Mac. One more time, download R for a Mac. And you just want this R 4.0.3 package. And that is just the thing you will need to download and install. So after you download it, you're just gonna click through. Next, 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 yes, agree, sign your life away, type in your password, enter. Okay, and all will go well, I promise. Okay, so after you get R installed, Come back here to the syllabus and then go through our studio. Is this doing okay for everyone? It's a little fast. But Mubarak says we're on target. So we're doing okay. All right, here we go. Here it is for our studio. When you go download our studio, there's two key words. The two key words are free and desktop, free and desktop. So here's desktop, here's free. That's gonna put you in this column. So you'll download this one. That wasn't so bad, right? How are people doing on Macs? Is everybody getting this going? Three PM is all Windows machines, and that was all for not. Quite possibly. <laughs> okay, let's have a brave volunteer on a Windows machine share their help. screen. I Looks like it. he wants to. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay. Once I figure out how to stop uh, sharing, there we go. Okay. This should be here. Totally. Should be our. Okay, will you pause here? Mm -hmm. Install R for the first time. That's the one you want for all of you Windows people. Install R for the first time. Yeah, thanks, Karen. And then download R for Windows, top. Nice. What is the difference there? I'm not sure if I clicked on, oh, I see. It's a subdirectory once you click on the, the CRAN or before that? Um, this is after you get the the, um, so if you made it through a mirror? Window, mirror. Gotcha, okay. And then for Windows, and then install R for the first time. And then... And then cool, back at the syllabus. After you install R, do R Studio. Oh, Kieran, it suddenly disappeared. Oh, they disappeared. Oh, it, yeah. is it Maybe back now? only shared the one window. That's okay. You can just go through the R Studio desktop. Okay. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I have, I have multiple um, <laughs> multiple monitors, so it might be messing up when I move things around. That's okay. We'll hear if anybody complains as they are going <laughs> through here. Once you do the R Studio, you find it free and desktop. Yes, those are the two yeah. keywords. Good, free and desktop. So, is it important that you actually go through the setup first before you actually install R Studio for R? You know. I've always believed it is, but I had somebody on a Windows machine earlier today who had success with installing R Studio first. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not convinced it's necessary to do R first. Just in my mind, it makes more sense and is safer to do it that way. Yeah. Juan, I hope you're safe, man, driving and logging onto Windows. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. When we do startup options, do we want to customize or no. does it matter Defaults probably doesn't matter but you don't need to customize anything perfect all right ours installed our studio is everybody doing okay here type into chat if you forgot to I just got home glad to hear you made it home safely Juan. <laughs> once we go our studio yeah do we just do the automatically recommended for my system Yes. Probably, yeah. How's everybody else doing? There's like a whole list of people I haven't heard from yet at all today. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Uh, where did where was that link to uh, put like install our studio for the first time? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you're at the syllabus, you go to R. Oh, okay. And then download R and then pick a CRAN. I mean, pick a mirror. Yep. One in Oregon's good. For Windows. There you go. You find it this time? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pick the CRAN. I agree with that. Do I pick the Oregon State one? Sure. Are you in California? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got it. And then, uh... uh, does it matter which one we choose, or could it be like the first one? No, theoretically, you can choose any one you want, but if you pick the one closest to you, it will download faster. But if you want to pick the one in, from New Zealand, go for it. It just might take a few seconds more. Okay. And then you just press the download R4.03 for the first time? Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. Thanks, thank you. Uh, Caitlin, uh, sorry to hear about the network failure issues. I don't know what's going on there. Um, as long as you're patient, I think you'll pull through. Hopefully. Okay. Wait, somebody's talking, but it sounds like they're miles away. Oh, once, sorry about that. Um, once I get to the R Studio, do I just download the R Studio desktop? As long as it's the free version of the desktop, free. You don't want to pay money for any of this. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Fantastic, Chris, thanks. All right. I have two R shortcuts. You want the R by 64 one, Mason. So if it installed an R64 one, you want that. But uh, Mason, now that I think about it, let me caution you here. We are only ever going to use R Studio. You need R on your machine, but you will only ever click on the R Studio link uh, icon. That's helpful information. Yeah, yeah. Jared, I'm sorry to hear yours is going slow too. Uh, maybe patience and or try again later tonight. You don't need any of this right now. I'm just trying to do it together so that we can, you know, get like a really good first step this week. I'm doing it on my tablet as well. 
which is connected to Wi-Fi, and that's considerably slower. But I'm also curious if all of us downloading from Oregon at the same time, it's just going to be slower in general. I mean, that's a theoretical issue. Like Very theoretical, yeah. Could be uh, at capacity here. But to be honest, that Shouldn't Oregon be. State mirror i bet is i would certainly really well hope built. so yeah <laughs> so mason did that make sense about using the r studio icon um so i downloaded r studio but it doesn't have like something to open it just has like for me it says resources and then i have probably 50 something files in that file uh, do you mind sharing your screen um um so i have my zoom on my mac and then i'm doing everything on my windows so it's hard to oh, okay uh kieran will you mind sharing your um home desktop so we can show how to find the appropriate shortcut for our studio thanks gary for the confidence in the organ you see State the desktop mirror. i can so i'm assuming we okay. all can um hopefully my start menu shows up because that's i just yeah i think uh, so i just searched for our studio and found it and then pinned it will you right hold here. that image right there so once you pull up the um whatever this folder is called there's like a search at the bottom of it you agree with that mason your start menu yeah got that cool and then there should be an r studio app icon yeah okay yeah i got that yeah and there then you, you can team you can make a, a shortcut or i put it on my start menu next to seda if you like but uh, okay yeah that works better you just outed yourself as an economist right there next to seda <laughs> well yeah we have to use this so you know <laughs> i thought jennings teaches r um he might but I know all, all the all the statistics classes I've taken with economics yeah, have yeah. been Seda. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, are we doing okay? Follow up questions on installing R in our studio, or can we move on? I'm not trying to rush you, but we should go through other things. Follow up questions. It's time. Ask them if you have them. Um, so I'm downloading R right now and it's taking a while. Should I just go ahead and download R Studio as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, downloading them too won't um, mess anything up if you're worried about that. Downloading them both at the same time, it's trying to run R Studios without R might be problematic. So mm -hmm. you should download them both and then just make sure you install the other one first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. All right, Karen, I'm cutting you. Uh, will we be using LaTeX? Yes. Jonathan, you are asking for the video that I've just created. Let's see if I can find it. Intro to our markdown. So I'm going to post this right after class. And this is a video that's going to help you figure out <laughs> Calvin, we're doing it anyway. That's going to help you figure out how to get started with LaTeX in your inside our studio. So I'm going back to the syllabus and I'm going to start making more sense about the questions Jonathan is asking me about and what Calvin's uh, trying to deny. All right, so course grading. There's going to be labs. We don't need to focus on those too much right now. They're a small component in your grade. I'm going to try to create online labs as if I gave you worksheets in class, but I'm gonna make them like web pages. Um, we're gonna do two tutorials throughout this class. So I'm gonna to try to ask you to write about two topics as if you are writing to someone who has never seen this material before. So I want you to pretend you're the teacher for like two topics of your choice throughout the semester. And then I want you to write them. I will say more about the tutorials later on but for now, there's like this whole section on how I want you guys to write tutorials. Um, the biggest component of, your, of this class is gonna be course notes. 
It's such a big component. I have a section of course notes here in the syllabus, and I have a lecture video devoted just to the topic course notes. So for now, let's just say all tutorials and course notes are going to be created using R Markdown. So that is like a syntax inside of R Studio that allows you to create really fancy files, either PDF or HTML, where the um, text is interweaved with R code. So it's like, you'll write out a paragraph of text, you'll write out some R code, the R code will show up in it, and you'll have these really fancy documents. Like, here's a really good example. On my homepage, I give this, these set of files to us as like a cheat sheet to figure out what R Markdown is. And you can see, we are going to learn how to type math in what Jonathan was asking about, LaTeX. That is a fancy way to get equations like this, or like this, or like here's a bunch of math symbols. I'm just literally giving you a table on how to type these out on your computer. And so this is an R Markdown document. You can see it has math in it, it has text in it, and it also has R code in it. So here is some R code and here is the output of that R code. And it puts that output in the file for you. So all of our course notes are gonna be made using uh, the same system, R Markdown, that prepared this file. And it also sounds like course notes are pretty well encouraged to just be typed. Course notes are have to be typed. So let's move on to course notes. Cool. In place of common homework assignments, you're going to create course notes in a style that I dictate. So I will describe the format of course notes in a YouTube video. And I'm going to post that YouTube video like minutes after class here. Of course, you're allowed to take your own notes while watching any of the content of this class. But the course notes are going to me going to be me helping you create a formal set of notes to be used as a reference for all your future work in statistics. So I want these to be a typed formal set of notes where you put code in and math in them. I'm going to refer to this formal set of notes as your course notes, capital letters. Technically, the due date for your course notes is not until the end of the semester. But you're more than welcome to show up into office hours and ask me questions on them so you can get feedback throughout the semester. Okay. Um, and then there's a little bit more about it that we don't need right now. This is like telling you how to name your file, but I go over that in the video itself. Okay, how about some quick follow up questions on course notes. So since it's due at the end of the semester, does that like pretty much imply that we probably won't know our grade to the end of the semester? No, the way you're going to get your grade out of this is show up to office hours and ask me for feedback on your course notes. Okay. Gotcha. And then I will say you like, if you're not following the style that I want and describe in the lecture video, then I'll tell you right there, like you're not following the style. I would probably award course notes like this, a C. Gotcha. Or okay. if you're doing really well in following the style, I would say you are doing really well. I'd give you a solid A for that work. Gotcha. Okay. Solid. Thank you for asking and clarifying. So this highlighted paragraph here is crucial. You can use my feedback to redo portions of your course notes for an improved grade. So if you show up and ask for feedback on your course notes, say in like three weeks, and I say, oh, this section right here is really not looking so good, I'd like you to touch it up. I will tell you how to touch it up and make it better. And then you'll be able to use that information to improve your course notes and thus ensure you get a better grade. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Is our course notes going to be us like following the YouTube videos and your program that you write and then we're going to put them in our notes? Yes, but I'm also going to ask you to develop your own program sometimes. Okay.
Okay, cool. There will be no formal tests. That's all there is to it. Shucks. I don't really have a makeup policy because there's not really hard deadlines on anything. If you want there to be some deadlines on some assignments, I will work with you to say, you should be turning in your course notes to me like monthly, and then I can give you feedback on those if you, if you do better with hard deadlines. But otherwise they're basically just due at the end of the semester and it's gonna be on you to keep up. So I really encourage office hours because that's gonna be like my way to pressure you to keep up. Uh, I got a diversity policy here in my syllabus because it's very important to me. The main piece of my diversity policy surrounds respect. I absolutely insist that you all respect each other, that I respect you all, and that you all respect me. So this is not criticizing other students for asking questions or making fun of them for uh, not knowing things that you might already know. Just be respectful, treat each other as human beings. I insist upon it. And in fact, we'll get very angry if we don't, but it's generally not a problem. We're usually pretty good about it. I think most of it comes from, I do my best to treat all of you with respect as we go through the semester. Uh, I think students find that to be a little bit more freedom in their class than they might be used to, but I've had really good success with it over the years by um, empowering students in the classroom. So we're going to continue that uh, throughout the semester. I am going to do my best to respect all of you, so long as you do your best to respect me and each other. Good talk. Academic integrity policy, I think you all know about that. Disability support, you got to please talk to me soon if you're going to need any assistance. Um, I'm happy to help. I am a mandated reporter. I don't know if you all know that. If you don't, here's a link that will tell you much more about it. Here was my best attempt at providing a course outline. I drew it just to be different. Uh, but again, this is probably not going to make much sense to a lot of us because none of us know these. OK, I might know some of these words, but not all of us know these words at this point. So the point is we're going to learn all of these words and how they fit together and why expectation is going to be the central theme throughout the class off which we derive all of the other topics of the course. I'm super excited. This is one of my favorite topics in all of stats. So I'm um, stoked, maybe too excited for the semester. We'll see how it goes. OK, we got, unfortunately, only one minute left at the end of class. Do you all have any questions? I'm happy to stick around for a few minutes more, but uh, I can't stick around for many, many minutes more. I have a question about signing up for Piazza. Oh, yeah. When I followed that link, there's mm -hmm. class one and um, am I just supposed to name it or did I miss like what code to enter into that? So the one I sent you should have been. I think since you're signed in, it's going to uh, bring you straight there, right? If you, if you type math 350, it'll auto complete and it'll find it for you. That's what I did. And then it, it like ah. it, it automatically sets you up with um, like creating an account and everything. So That's if you type in, if you know. type in math 350, yeah, it, it should work. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Josiah. Thanks, Karen. Of course. No problem. All right. What else we got? If you need to get out of here, it is 3.50. That is the end of the day. I will answer some more questions if you all have them. But if you need to run, run. See you later. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Gary. See ya. So the Thank next you. time we'll actually see you is Friday, or do we still show up on Wednesday having watched the lecture? That's on you. If you have questions to ask on Wednesday, please do. It'll be basically like office hours. OK, cool. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday, you're basically encouraging us to watch the lecture on YouTube and then show up to the class. I'm questions. encouraging, but not requiring you to show up to class, Dalton. Okay. Yeah. And so are you going to be um, posting all of the lectures or from on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or is there only one lecture? 
there's going to be really... two per week. Well, okay, let's let me back up a page. On Monday, there's going to be like a lecture live in person. Okay. And for Wednesday's lectures, I'm going to post a series of videos. Okay. So it's not going to be like one video on Wednesday that's 50 minutes long. What I try to do is make my videos like five to 20 minutes long. Okay. But that means I have one to five of them. And then you'll, okay. for Wednesday's lecture, watch all those videos. And then there is no formal lecture for Friday. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dalton. I was just going to ask, when did you make the switch back to R from Python in terms of programming and teaching? Because I remember last time I took a class with you, it was all Python based. The immediate next semester. <laughs> okay. Um, it was a real struggle for a lot of students to program in Python. Uh, as much as they claimed that Python would be easier, it turns out Python, because it's so object oriented, has a lot of lingo, has a lot of language built into it. And so what I found was trying to teach students statistics, meanwhile, using the language of object oriented programming languages was too much of a mental hurdle for students. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, John, I think I remember you now. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of people asking me for Python over the semester. So finally I was like, let's do it, let's try. But it did not go well because, um, you know, when you're trying to learn stats and, and I'm like standing above your shoulder or whatever, trying to help you code. And I'm like, no, 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 it's a method, not a function. You yeah, have to immediately I do remember a lot of that going on at that towards the yeah, end of the semester. You have to immediately know that the thing I'm talking about is an object. And on that object is attached dot a function instead of having the function show up over here and it being called on the thing. And that sort of stuff was a real mental hurdle for students when I was trying to teach them statistics. Well, that makes sense. Um, yep. Thanks, I'll see you uh, Monday or Friday or Wednesday, whenever it is. <laughs> Sounds good, John, see ya. Uh, hey, what? Thank you. Um, can you there a question? hear me? Yes, I yeah, can, but I didn't hear a question. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So um, oh. I was about to ask for the Zoom recording. Um, you say you're gonna post it up, but may I know mm -hmm. like um, which part of your website are you gonna post it up? Is it in the okay. YouTube channel? Oh, okay. So the way I'll do it is I'll have another bullet point right here, and I'll have something like okay. videos. Oh, okay. So and then I will give you links. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I'll give you links to the videos in YouTube. Oh, okay, all right. Thank so you. all the videos will be hosted in YouTube, but I will give you specific links to them here. Okay, does it include today's um, recordings as well? Yes. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, have a good day. You too. Okay, I think I'm content, so I will go ahead and hop out. Sounds good, Josiah. See ya. Nice to meet you. And was it Edward or Ed? Edward, please. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Catch you later, Edward. Yep. Angel, thanks for the thumbs up. Or do you go by Anha? See you, Jonathan. How's it going? Do you go by Angel or Angel? Or Angle? <laughs>